This is Dr. S. P. Arsa from Mechanical and Engineering Department, IIT Roorkee. In the course of vibration control, we are discussing about the principles of passive vibration control. And in this, we are going to discuss about the isolators design along with the stiffness, proper stiffness and the proper damping feature. Prior to go to this lecture, we know that in the last lecture, we mainly discussed about that you know like how we can design the sock absorber, what is the specific use of the sock absorber when we are, when we are coupled the spring with the damper and then you see if we are a lone spring is using then what exactly the feature means the features are being coming out from that. So, we discussed about the various types of the sock absorber right from the metallic spring to the pneumatic features, the hydraulic features. And even you see here, we know that some self-containing hydraulic features are there in the, the sock absorber and even in the railway vehicles, we know, that, we know that even prior to fail the things, we are just using a specific kind of sock absorber which is just you know like uh, uh, absorbing the high amount of impact energy under the plastic flow or any kind of we can say the elastic region. We also discuss about that how we can design the sock absorber means uh, what kind of you see you know like rather rather we are using the hydraulic cylinder or the in, in the pneumatic part or in the fluidic feature of the cylinder or even when we are using the coiled or leaf spring or the torsional bars then how the integration can be coupled together it, it, the integrations of these two things are just you know like uh, properly designed and coupled in such a way that it can provide the smoother part because we know that when the shock features, the impulsive forces are being coming due to the, uh, the irregularity of the road or the bumps or any kind of thing, then not only we need to absorb the uh, amount of energy, but also it needs to dissipate or to you know like uh, just uh, we can say transfer or absorb the energy at the time of you see here the excitations. So, all three features right from absorbing to dissipating to we can say you know, like uh, controlling the features by storing is being provided by this sock absorber. So, you see here uh, the, the previous two lectures were dedicatedly given to the concept of sock absorber because this is one of the most common device which is being there right from automobiles to the industrial machinery or even the aircraft motion as well. So, in this lecture now again the passive vibration control concept is there, but with the design of the isolators in which you see the stiffness and the damping features are being associated together. So, when we are talking about the noise or vibration we know that it they have the undesirable effects not only on the machine or on the material of the machine, but also on the human part when the comfort, discomfort, the quality of life and everything is coming. So, we just want to adopt the strategy in which we can reduce the noise and vibration just by interrupting the progression path, whatever the propagation things are there and we need to just strike out this in between the source and receiver. And we know that this is one of the effective way the passive vibration control in which we are using the elastic mounting just to hinder the spread of the structural vibrations. So, in practice an elastic mounting system can be realized by incorporating the vibration isolators along the along with the, prop, uh, the propagation path. So, when we are saying that the elastic mounting is being there, we need to check it out that what the strong vibrating features are there in that and accordingly we can simply put the elasticity feature in the elastic mountings. So, vibration isolation is another we can say like uh, the kind of feature in which the substructure is being incorporated between the vibrating and the ground itself or any two component we can say. So, the objective of this vibration isolation is to reduce the vibration at a specific portion of the receiver structure. So, it is apparent that the vibration isolation can be realized 
in various ways because through that we are striking not only on the source or the receiver, but also we are trying to deviate the path through the transmission feature. So, it is therefore falls upon the designer just to arrive an effective isolation system design which can be well suited to the specific situations. But generalized if you are talking about then we have three main things the source, path and the receiver and through that we can effectively control the entire vibration features. So, when we are talking about the source we know that the source may be of solid or the fluidic feature may be unbalanced or misalignment in the solid, may be looseness or may be you see you know like the external force features are there. In the fluidic part, the airborne structure where you see the flow induced vibrations are there. So, even the bearing fe the, uh, the defects in bearing, the gear meshing features, even there are various flame blading, uh, fan blading passings, various you see the solid medias are there through which the vibrations are being generated and the noise is being spread it out. The path, this is something we can say is absolutely based on either the solid or liquid, the structure or the airborne path by which the disturbance is simply being transmitted towards the receiver. And the receiver is nothing but the responding feature which generally even like having various natural frequencies at which the entire system is excited and simply being going to the receiver end. So, the best solution to a vibration problem just to avoid at the first place means we need to strike it, strike it out at the source only and the intelligent, intelligent design is far more cost effective than what the when we are building a bad design and having just repairing later on by deviating the path or something something like that. But when you see here it is unavoidable then the another thing is that how to minimize this. So, minimizing the vibration transmission is generally involving the isolated springs or the inertia blocks. Because ultimately we need to deviate the whatever the transmission features when the vibrations are being transmitted. So, the basic principle is to make the natural frequency of the machine on its foundation is far below the excitation frequency as possible. So, that is why you see here we need to just strike it out that how we can make the natural frequency is just lower down. So, that whatever the exciting frequencies are being coming you know like the resonance can be avoided and this can be done either by using springs or by inertia blocks. How you can see that now we have three configuration even rather four the fourth is the next one. So, three con configuration which is which is on your screen. First a simple machine which is bolted to the rigid foundation. So, whatever the exciting part is coming through the vibrating of mass on top immediately transmit out because we have rigid connection through the bolt. Second, we are just pro providing a simple isolator using a spring in between the vibrating mass and the rigid foundation. And third, we are providing a machine the vibrating we can say you know like uh, the system which is being attached to the inertia block and then to the uh, using a spring we are simply coupled with the rigid foundation. So, you see here in between the rigid foundation and the vibrating mass we have added mass which is we can say the inertia block and the spring itself. So, you see here when we are using in like uh, this bolted feature in the rigid floor we know that whatever the force which is being generated by the uh, vibration mass immediately transmit it out to the foundation. The transmitted force can also be decreased by adding a suspension device of the spring in between the vibrating mass and the foundation as I shown in the B. And also you see here some inertia block which has you know like uh, the mass in terms of you know like the concrete or anything which can be directly attached to the machine, the vibrating machine and then you see the spring and the foundation can be provided. And the fourth one we can rather add the seismic mass in between the two isolation we can say the spring which we are saying that you see right from the foundation and this foundation is rather not the rigid one. It has you see the flexible foundation at which the force is being transmitted and then you see we can say that in between you see 
the foundation, the flexible foundation and the vibrating mass, we have seismic mass in between these two springs. So, this is you see, we can say a second level of isolator is being there along with the seismic mass in terms of the spring. So, these are the four features through which we can apply the isolator for an effective control on vibration by suppression it. So, this is what you see the suppression feature of vibration either by adding the spring or by adding the mass so that the resonance feature of the exciting masses or, or of the exciting uh, object can be avoided. Now, we are going for the mathematical treatment of this. So, we know that the equation of motion for such devices are all the force balance condition, the inertia force, the damping force and the uh, uh, restoring forces are being balanced by the external excitation force. And from that the response, the final response can be simply taken as x of t is equals to f0 which is the input force by k divided by 1 minus r square sin omega t. So, this is what my output response of the system where the r is nothing but the uh, uh, frequency ratio omega by omega n, omega at which the system is exciting, omega n which is the natural undamped frequency of the system which can be calculated as square root of k by m. So, when we are just going that what exactly the transmission is there through the excitation to the transmitted force, then we can say that we can calculate the transmissibility which is nothing but equals to F t transmission force divided by the input excitation force F 0 and we can say that this is nothing but equals to 1 divided by r square minus 1, where the r is the frequency ratio or else we can say that it is nothing but equals to the responses of machine whatever you see the responses are there and the displacement of the foundation x by y. So, you, so you see we can say that the transmission rather in terms of the machine uh, response with the displacement of the foundation x by y or with the force transmission f t by f 0, it, it can be easily evaluated based on 1 minus r square by 1 and the effect uh, and the effectiveness of the isolator can also be expressed in terms of the sound propagation path and it is nothing but equals to 10 log 10, the log to the base 10, 1 by t, means that the inverse part of the transmissibility. And you see this effectiveness is always being taken care that you see how much you see the sound propagations are there in terms of the sound level energy at the end in dB. So, now you see we just want to see the effectiveness of the isolator, we can simply express in terms of the percentage effect. So, percentage isolation is nothing but equals to 1 minus t into 100 you see. So, transmissibility is nothing but the function of r, the frequency ratio because we know that the, it is nothing but equals to 1 divided by r square minus 1. So, the vibration isolation which we are defining as t is always occurs when the exciting frequency is greater than 1.4 fn. Means, when you know that the isolation is a purely effective tool and it is acting as you know like as it is being designed only when the transmissibility or we can say that this uh, entire exciting frequency is always greater than 1.4 times of fn. And for minimum transmissibility, when the minimum transmissibility is there, when you have the maximum isolation effect the excitation frequency should be high as high as the natural frequency. So, that the resonance can be avoided and the absorption feature through the spring can be effectively done either by spring or mass whatever. So, transmissibility above resonance has a clear slope with the sound level of 20 dB per decade and in that you see here when we just want to include the damping effect in the transmissibility then the formula for calculation of this is nothing but equals to square root of 1, square root of 1 plus 2 zeta r square, where the zeta is the damping ratio which is simply calculating based on the available damping divided by the critical damping. The r is the frequency ratio, the exciting frequency, the forcing frequency we can say divided by the natural frequency divided by square root of 1 minus r square plus 2 zeta r square. So, critical, damp, uh, critical damping ratio is something which simply shows the effect of damping on the exciting features. If 
the available damping is less than the critical damping, we know that this is the system where you see like the critical or we can say the higher or the lower damping features are there. So, this is you see the under critical damping features. So, in that we can say the system is oscillating with exponential and sinusoidal feature. Second, the, this is what the under damping. Second, you see when the zeta is greater than 1 in which the damping is, the available damping is more than the critical damping is, the over damped phenomena in which even we have the exponential decay. But you see here, this feature is will take the infinite time to get it the steady state response or it is just to the dampen out. So, ultimately our system is to be designed on the critical damp feature in which the available damping and the critical damping should be equal to dampen out the entire vibration at the quickest, quickest time. So, you know like we are saying that we are just keeping the damping ratio in between 0 0.005 to 0 0.1 for the steel and 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 for the rubber material. Because this inclusion of damping has the greatest effect in the vicinity of resonance and they are absolutely decreasing the vibration amplitude by absorbing or dissipating the energy part. And the curious effect of the damping is that the result is simply increase the amplitude at the frequency which has greater than 1.4 times the natural frequency. So, when we are designing the vibration isolator and when we are straightway adopting uh, using the helical spring, they are always been providing a good stiffness. But only you see here, they are simply, they, they are not basically we can say transmitting feature, they are simply uh, you know like we can say compressibilities are there due to the uh, spring part, they are uh, uh, just uh, saving the energy and releasing the energy accordingly. But the elastomere layer, where you see the elastometric properties are there, which we can say the neoprene or any kind of you know like such things, they are simply providing some kind of damping along with the compressive or the we can say the elastic nature of the spring is. So, various other types of we can say the elastomeric elements are there along with we can say in which we can say that they are, they are simply a provider of the stiffness and the damping together. So, measure of the transmission isolation. So, when we are talking about uh, isolation design, we need to see that what is the optimal vibration isolation should be there, which is nothing but you see that how, how much vibration level can be suppressed out, how the energy is being dissipated and you see here you know like uh, accordingly, how the system is bringing towards the stable nature by doing that. So, some of the major, some of the major is there for isolation, vibration isolation and that you see we can say that they are simply permitting that how the alternative strategies to, should be adopted, so that we can simply bring an effective solution of that. So, there are various measures according to the applications are being taken in that. The best in this is the insertion loss. The insertion loss is nothing but you see here, it is simply showing that how the sound level is being effectively damp out before and after being using, but there are two path or there are two ways through which we can define the insertion loss. One is based on the velocity component that what is the velocity level is there. Because we know that velocity is also linearly depending on the frequency. So, we need we can straightway check that the insertion loss is nothing but equals to what is the before vibration of the entire structure and after applying the isolation what is the uh, this velocity part and the difference is giving the insertion loss in terms of the dB. And the same time you see the force which is the critical part in the excita excitation feature of the entire structure can also be taken for uh, calculating the insertion loss. So, the force before the uh, before adopting the isolation and after putting the isolation we can measure and the difference is giving like that. So, we can say that the insertion loss is nothing but the difference in the level at the given point before and after adopting the vibration isolation in terms of the velocity or the force and it is being measured in terms of the dB. So, you can see the simple 
machine which is being mounted on mounted on the rigid foundation uh, before you can see this is a rigid connection in between the machine and the foundation and vibration transmission is a absolute criteria there whatever the vibration generation and transmission they are perfect no loss of this force is there so either the force or the velocity there is no loss but when we are uh, adopting you see the vibration isolator say uh, in between the source as machine and this particular path which is my foundation when we are adopting this we can simply see the insertion loss in between you see here this force and this one so f after whether the velocity and f after whether the velocity or the force can be just uh, taken care and see the effectiveness of this in terms of the insertion loss so with these models it is simply you know like we can say that what exactly the device is through which we can measure the isolation effectiveness just by weighting different frequency component or we can say the bands like you know like a weighting b weighting and you see it's all you see the weight, weighting factors are there through which we can just see the effectiveness part and the choice of relevant gauge of the effectiveness is just based on what are the sp specific application of the component what are the service conditions towards that so the machine is regarded as the rigid point mass which i am going to show you see here and the isolator can be act as a idle spring so this rigid mass we can say rigid point mass and the idle spring is one of the good we can say uh, idle perfect uh, uh, we can say the compact feature in which we can simply adopt that what the insertion and the other losses are so now i am going to show the figure in which the various you see you know like uh, the types are there in which the insertion losses are there the first is showing the insertion loss when the mounting positions are being taken to be a rigid and you see here the other two curves which are being you know like simply measured the stiffness of two alternative mounting positions one as the stiff at the resonance of two ribs and one is the softer on the same we can say single rib is being used and if the softer mounting is just position accordingly the isolation obtained at the higher frequency cannot be more than 7 to 8 db of the insertion loss so you can see that these abc features are there the a as we discussed about the rigid foundation b is the flexible foundation in which the mounting at the insertion losses with the two ribs c is also you see here with the you know like the flexible foundation but the mounting using a single rib so you can see the fluctuations that how much effective controls are there in the vibration in the insertion losses along with you see the frequencies are there so there are various ways to design the foundation as we discussed about the rigid and uh, flexible foundation such that the mounting points have desired properties like the low mobility and most of the methods in practice are just based on the use of the added masses or the stiffened beam applied to the system in appropriate way so in such situations we can say that it is important to plan the solution right from the design stage and their incorporation at the later stage just to give you know like the desired dynamic property and we know, we know that this is not only the time consuming but also you see effective expensive part in effective less effective way so what are the considerations when we are just choosing the vibration isolator first the machine location as we discussed we need to see that when we we are simply putting the vibrating machines in such a way that they should be as far as possible from the other parts of the machine or the workers just like you see we know that when we are just going to any power plant rather you see it is a gas based or uh, the thermal power plant the turbo generator units in which the total generator features are there the heavy rotors are being used to transmit the entire power which is being generated say in that boiler or somewhere it is creating a huge amount of inertia forces and along with the huge amount of inertia forces because of you see you know like the unbalanced feature on any feature you see when the, this huge mass is generating the huge inertia we know that the high level of exciting vibrations and the sound levels are there so that's why we are keeping in such a distant level that it should not affect 
the other machinery part first. Second, we can simply put the rigid foundation means we can see the high grade foundation so that we can provide the best isolation at the source itself prior to go for the transmission feature. Second is the proper sizing of isolator unit. The proper sizing means the stiffness, whatever the stiffness of the spring which we are providing, it should be correct for the static deflection or even we can say for more flexible is always being better. And the sufficient travel to prevent the shock level, the shock loads or you see vibration level should be like, uh, uh, should be provided in such a way that it can absorb or it can deviate the path of this transmission feature of the vibration. So, these you see the isolator units are being chosen according to the sizing of this feature. The third is the location of isolator in this you see here the isolator on the machine isolator means the source isolator on the, re, uh, the receiver or isolator on we can say the transmission path should be chosen according to the excitation level of the system. The fourth is very important that is the stability. The side wave motion should be rest, restrained with the snubder, snubbers and these snubbers they are always providing good stability to the entire system and the diameter of a spring which we are you know, like designing should also be greater than its compressed height. Otherwise you see you know like the buckling or any kind of effect is there. Isolator spring should also occupy a wide foot you know like a footprint for the stability. It should not you see just going towards the bending or it should not going you see towards the torsional effect in that. Fifth is the adjustment. The spring should you know like travel or should not you see you know like fully compressed in such a way that we cannot even go for any kind of adjustment and the heating of the mechanical devices are being there due to the fluctuation loading when the spring is compressed or released. We need to eliminate the short circuit of the vibration. So, any mechanical connection between the machine and the foundation through which the you know like uh, the isolator is being there, just like you see the pipes, conduits or we can say the spring or poorly adjusted snubbers or any mechanical stops. We need to check it out that the isolator should be you know like in such a way that it should bypass the thing in such a way that it is not transmitting the entire vibration to these pipes or any conduits or any uh, binding springs. So, in this section now we are designing the absorber for continuous system. So, we can say that a general beam can be taken as the primary system with the absorber attached to it and subjected to the harmonic force excitation. And the point of excitation is located in such a way that, that you see you know like uh, the absorber can be placed absolutely along with this part. And the uniform cross section is considered for the beam and we know that the euler bernoulli theorem can be straightway applied with all the assumptions. And now you see we are simply assuming that whatever the beam which is being taken has the constant and uniform cross section. And now you see we are considering the elastic deformation part along the neutral axis of the beam say in terms of the space and time x and t and you see you know like these uh, derivations are simply followed with the time and the space part and they are simply say that it is simply a partial derivative with respect to the time variable and the position variables. So, now you see the kinetic energy can be computed using the material property of the stiffness uh, is the beam is the density rho and you see here whatever the excitations are there it is being varied with the time. So, dy by dt. So, what we have? We have now the kinetic energy half rho for entire beam whatever you see the deviations are there dy by dt square 0 to L integration into dx plus the added mass I am going to show you that that is m a q dot it is you know like uh, uh, it is being you know like varied with the q dot. So, q dot square plus m e q e dot square half. So, you can see that we have you see this is what the excitation the beam is simply excited there. Now, you see here 
since the beam has its own inherent, pro inherent property like the elastic moduli, the length, the, uh, uh, the cross, the length, the area and the moment of inertia in that. And when we are saying that we are adopting the two different masses for absorbing feature along with the damper, the stiffness and also you see here we have a special feature damping so that the linear strain can be provided in this. So, we have the at location A and location B and for this we can say the potential energy is nothing but equals to half E i the modulus rigidity into now this part in which you see you know like the entire uh, you know like uh, the deflection features are there. So, d del 2 y by del x square square into dx plus the mass which is being added. So, half k a the y which is based on you know like a comma t minus q which is you see you know like this uh, the, the whatever the displacement is there of the mass a the q a square and simply when we are talking about mass e half k e y the b t because this is you see you know like the time and the space feature b comma t minus q e which is you see the mass e displacement square. So, I have both the kinetic energy and the potential energy together and based on you see the Hamiltonian principle we can simply write the equation of motion which is simply like providing or facilitating the stability analysis and we can simply get you see like the entire equation based on the Lagrangian dynamics and for that first assumption which we are assuming that the Galerkin approximation for this that is nothing but equals to the y whatever you see the deflection which is based on the space and the time x comma t is nothing but equals to summation of i to 1 phi i q of b i t b i times t. So, it simply shows that when we are simply describing these things in which you see here we have you know like the variations along with the angles we can simply you know like chosen using the Marovich part the orthogonality conditions in that for the mode shape. So, we have the in integration of 0 to L rho phi i and rho phi z both based on the x part is nothing but equals to the two constant n i delta i where the delta is the chronical delta, uh, chronical delta the delta part and this is simply showing that how the variations are there in i and j feature. So, we can say that this is the integration of e i phi j x phi j a into x dx is nothing but equals to the s delta i j. So, here we know that the chronical delta which simply shows you know like the unit vector deviation and n i and s i is simply like uh, we are getting with the setting of i comma z. So, we can say that now we can even put the excitation feature and when we are doing this the feedback of the absorber when we are saying that you know like uh, when we are trying to actu uh, actuate the exciting force and the uh, damping dissipation forces both can be put you see here with the absorber and the exciter and then we can say that whatever the non-conservative forces which are being there can be immediately formulated based on the Lagrangian dynamics and accordingly we can say that the absorb the absorber dynamics which is being there you see on on, on on that particular entire beam is nothing but equals to the equation m a q a double dot the exciter part you see here with the inertia forces as the mass is being in like a oscillating with q a and c a that is the damper with the exciter into q dot a t q dot a with the t minus all the summation which we are simply assumed previously that is summation of phi i into a q b i into t. So, this you see the variation is clearly showing that the difference between whatever the damper which is you know the damping effect which is being provided there and second you see here how the orthogonal conditions are being there using the Galerkian approximation there itself. And then you see here the restoring forces k a q a dot q a into t. So, this is you see whatever the uh, uh, you know like the restoring forces being coming out when the exa, uh, this uh, added mass is there minus summation of i to 1 n g into q a q double dot a t minus tau at the time you see you know like the uh, time constant what exactly the differences are there and how you see the absorption, absorption features are there under the dynamic actions. And even you see using this Marovich conditions we can also apply the same conditions there for this here. So, the based on those when we are simply going with the chronicle delta 
the coefficient at i equals to z you see n i and s i and you know like we can simply represent the beam vibrations using this is the continuous vibration using you see you know like the partial derivatives of n i q i double dot b i of t because you see at the b the exciters are there plus s i plus s i q b i t. So, n i and s i are simply using as the constant plus c a into this Galerian displacement with the ap approximation feature minus whatever the exciting features are there in the damper using the velocity part. So, we have phi i a q uh, this uh, q of b i minus q of a q dot a which is the velocity of our added mass. And then you see we can adopt you see phi of a plus c e this is what the exciter feature into summation of all this in between you see the differences are the phi into q b i t minus q dot e plus you see the restoring force which can be incorporated using k a and k e means the absorber and the exciter. And then you see here we can say that this is equals to f of t phi i b, where we know that you see the entire features are being just taken care with the exciting force into this phi i b. So, with the proper selection of the gain, feedback gain which was shown there you see here, the absorber can be tuned to the desired resonant frequency and when it is being tuned, we know that the entire amount of excitation which is being there is being absorbed by this absorber mass. So, this condition in turn forces the beam to motionless when with the tuned feature is there and when the beam is excited at say you know like uh, the external forces at the frequency f c, we can say that you know, like the added mass is simply reached with the using of you know like the Laplacian transformation, we can say y of a comma s, when we are just using the you know like uh, the uh, this feedback control law for the absorber, the y of a comma s, whatever the displacement in the absorber part is nothing but equals to using the Galerian part summation of i equals to 1 to n phi i a into q b i s equals to 0. So, the entire amount of energy is being absorbed by this attached mass when this attached mass is tuned to the entire beam. And we can say that this y of s is nothing but equals to the function of a comma t comma q a s of t into then you see whatever the displacement is there the q a comma t and we can say that the q a which is the generalized feature is nothing but equals to which, which is we can say the coordinate uh, the generalized coordinate for that is nothing but equals to the function of q of b i into t means you see what the exciter uh, displacements are there of this. So, ultimately you see when we are talking about the displacement of our absorber which is depending on a comma s, the a is its own you see the coordinate the absorber and s is the generalized coordinate, we can say that it is clearly showing the dependency on y and q a of this particular you know like the entire absorber. And we can say the y of a comma t is nothing but equals to in this case of the entire which we can say beam at the point a is nothing but equals to summation of i, I equals to 1 to n phi i a q b i t equals to 0. So, this is what the condition for a special case in which we are simply mounting the exciter and the absorber and we can tune the absorber along with the beam vibration to get the beam excitation 0. And we, we can say that it simply indicates that we have a steady state vibration at the point of attachment of the ab absorber and it is can be straightway eliminated. So, absorber mimics a resonator at the frequency of excitation and absorber you see you know like absorb all the energy, vibration energy at the point of attachment only. So, this is one of the specific uh, mathematical and we can say you know like uh, the physical treatment of such problems in which we can simply define that what exactly the way of the absorber is to be designed so that it can be tuned with the even continuous say system because we have say continuous plate or any kind of you see the continuous structure is there. We can simply attach the mass in such a way that it, it should be tuned with the excitation frequency of the entire continuous structure and it can be immediately dampen, dampen out even up to the 0 amplitude of the vibration at the source or even at you see here when we know that it is being transmitted even at the localized region we can add these you know like the isolator to dampen out the vibration. So, you know like uh, in this we discussed about 
the isolator which is supposed to be designed along with the spring and the damper and which can be act as you see you know like uh, the vibration isolation features. So, either at the source or at the transmission path or at the receiver the many things can be designed and we discussed you see in various way especially under the category of passive vibration control. So, this is all about our passive vibration control which we started from the basics. Then we designed the shock absorber which has a greater application because we know that whatever the forces which are being coming to the system or from the system to the surrounding they are always being either the nonlinear, random or even the impactive feature. So, all the time we cannot say that the vibration which are being generated during the rotation of the component or the machine excitation is always having the simple harmonic motion feature or the steady state feature. They may have and that is even there you see because of the basics of dynamics says that you may not have all the time steady state response, you may have the transient feature. So, these transient feature of the vibration can be effect effectively controlled using the passive devices. So, we straight away we design right from the basic to shock absorber to the isolator and then you see here either we are using you see the mass or the spring we, you know like they can be effectively used according to the exciting energy or the excitation frequencies which should not be you know like close to the resonance. And when the things are being there at the resonance, then the damper is one of the effective way. And in the damper you see here, we even discussed whether it is a you know like uh, the dash pot based on the pneumatic part or based on the oil feature or even you see the elastomeric features are there in that, in which the viscoelastic features can be added towards that. Or even you see here, we can go with the very specific part in this that you see whether we are using the silicon based or any other waste you see in which the temperature sensitivities are there. So, in the entire passive vibration control devices, we discussed about that how effectively we can use these isolators or the absorber in such a way that it can you know like suppress the vibration at the source, even if it can suppress the vibration at the receiver end and the same time you see here it can you know like control the vibration at the transmission path by adopting mass, the seismic mass or we can say some added mass or even by adopting the springs, maybe you see the coiled spring, leaf spring, uh, torsional bars or even by adopting the various types of dampers there. So, this is you see you know like this chapter was mainly focused on the passive vibration control. Now, the next lecture will be based on the active vibration control in which these devices are not directly applied. There now we need to sense and we need to actuate based on some electronic forces. So, this is something we can say a smart kind of controlling where you see we are creating the anti resonant forces using some electronic features. So, that is why you see here the sensor and actuator they have a direct linked with this particular active vibration control and you see there are many places where the active vibration control either by using some smart materials or by using these you know like uh, the sensing feature or actuation features that active vibration control can be effectively implemented at the vibration excitations. Thank you very much. <laughs>